Hi, I'm Mina Malik Hussain and this is The Coffee Table. And as always, we have an excellent show lined up for you today. And today on the show, we're going to be talking about PR and like what is PR. When we talk about PR, it's sort of how has it evolved over time? What exactly do you need PR for? So many questions. And how has PR evolved in the age of the influencer? And today we're going to be talking to two trailblazers of the PR scene in Pakistan and two women who have changed the landscape of what PR means, who have in a way really sort of introduced us to the whole idea of public relations and why it's actually really important and a really, really useful skill for brands to have. You know, lucky for them, we already have people doing this work. <laughs> I'm really, really excited today to be welcoming on the, so, on the show Selena Rashid, who is the CEO of Lotus PR, which is Pakistan's first dedicated communications and PR firm that Selena set up at the tender age of 23 and has gone on to do so many amazing things with Lotus. And I can't sort of now read out the whole list, but she is just a wonder woman who is the vice president of the the Prida Council and in 2020 was awarded the Media Entrepreneur of the Year Award by the Women's Chamber of Commerce, amongst many other accolades and awards and wonderful campaigns that Lotus has run over all these years. We are also joined by Farishte Gati Aslam, who is the CEO of Talking Point, which is an integrated communications agency. Farishte has been a cricket journalist who ran external communications for Unilever Pakistan. She also started up and headed integrated marketing company Golan for two years here in Pakistan and continues to do all sorts of wonderful projects with her clients here in Karachi. So we've got Karachi and Lahore represent at the same time. <laughs> Welcome to the show, ladies. This is wonderful. So Selena, tell me, I know that um, you used to work with the PR firm in London and then you came back home to Lahore and you said, well, here is a gap in the market and it needs to be addressed. So before we get into Lotus, like what is PR really? Like, What does it mean to do public relations? So uh, thanks, Mina, for having me on the show. I'm really happy to be here. And I'm happy with the question you've asked. Because if you asked this question of me 14 years ago when I started Lotus, mm. it was something that I have to say I spent the finer part of my business development simply trying to explain what PR is. <laughs> because at that time, there was just very much an event management industry. Yes. And PR was sort of a very small segment of club to an event hmm. and uh, but now I'm happy to say when you ask me what PR is public relations is a full service communications industry hmm. that is used essentially as a tool to shape narratives images companies reputations people brands hmm. you name it governments huh. I mean across uh, across yeah. And it's essentially uh, image uh, creation, huh. management, and sustaining uh, right. in, a in a strategic manner. Hmm. So these are, it takes this sort of three-pronged approach to, hmm, oh, that, that's really interesting. And I want to sort of come back to that in just a minute. But tell me a little bit more about Lotus. So when you sort of started out, the Lotus was... What was your vision for Lotus? So um, I, my introduction to PR happened ah. in uh, England, in ah. London, when I worked yeah. at Avalon Public Relations. I had no idea what PR was before. Yeah. And over there, I feel like it was such a wonderful crash course hmm. for two years just having to sort of dive into the deep end and work with some of, you know, Britain's top comedians and mm. understanding what it is. Yeah. And um, I realized that it's something that Pakistan at that point didn't have. Like I said, uh, it was mainly pegged to an event. So say someone yeah. was having an event, like it's an yeah. award ceremony or a you know festival, and event PR would just be call a bunch of journalists, call a bunch of photographers, yeah. and have them take pictures and write articles about it. Coverage, just yeah. yeah. huh. So <laughs> me, when I set up Lotus, and when I, sh I shifted back to Pakistan specifically to start a PR agency, it wasn't uh -huh. that I shifted because I decided, oh, I back home yeah and the vision for lotus was 
to pick up what is quintessentially Pakistani and be able to project that yeah. within Pakistan and then mm. externally outside Pakistan. Yeah. So I'm yeah. very patriotic and I think that's something Farishte and I share uh, uh, yes. very intensely. Huh. That for us, uh, working with you know projects that are very Pakistani and promoting the Pakistani communications industry globally is very important. Yes, absolutely. And something that I want to sort of delve into in, in a little bit more detail in, in just a minute. But hi, Farishte. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello, hello. Lovely to have you. So tell me, Farishte, you've been at this longer than most people in the industry. And you started out as a journalist. So how did that journey sort of happen? That you're sort of from one kind of communications to another? Because on one level, I feel like maybe it's all connected in a way as well. You're right, Mina. Uh, when I think back, but I say anything, let me say that in this PR world huh. that we are talking about, Selena is the absolute trailblazer. Yeah. And in fact, when uh, I was at Unilever, she was our top person to go to for mm. anything to do with PR. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Selena set the trail for sure and uh, took P it elevated PR from just uh, coverage to a proper, proper industry that mm. we are now uh, at Preda trying to, you know, uh, formalize. Uh, having said that, uh, I don't think I could have been a good PR person without that background of journalism. Right. Because uh, as you say, essentially, it's all communication. Hmm. So as a journalist, that's all you do. You communicate yeah. thoughts, ideas, events, reportage, everything. Yeah. So that's what I did for the first 15 years of my <laughs> life, working life huh. in my 20s and mid-30s. And I loved every minute of it. I mean, it was a high, it was fantastic. It opened up worlds, it let me travel. Uh, I was with, I met some fascinating people. So yeah, yeah. that was the foundation laying stone. Then mm. came the 10 years at Unidiva, yeah. uh, spearheaded by the event that we now know as the Lux Style Awards. Mm. And uh, they got <laughs> me on as awards manager. And after the awards management bit, they said, well, um, you're doing something right. Come on board and help <laughs> us do the same yeah. with the rest of our brands. And that's how PR brand PR started. Right. <clears throat> and that in itself was a whole lot of fun. Hmm. And hmm. I have to say, uh, I fell in love with my brands. Yeah. And I still do. I find myself falling any brand that you work on. I find myself falling in love with it. And then... Um, the task of communicating that brand story, ah. to me, that is PR. Hmm. Uh, every brand has a story, um, yeah. whether it's a biscuit, whether it's an oil, whether it's a soap, whether it's ah. a uh, anything, anything hmm. to do with hmm. consumerism yeah. is a story. And that's a story yeah. waiting to be told. Huh. And that excites me. It seriously does huh. because, you know, again, it's communication. Yeah. And uh, that's what brought me to, so yeah, two years at Golin, I actually learned the ropes of PR working with the team in Singapore because it was a global PR company. Yes, yes. I learned a lot. I learned yeah, what to do. Yeah. I learned what not to do. Huh. I learned where to draw boundaries. Mm. And uh, here we are, five years and two talking point. <laughs> well, that's wonderful. And, and I, was, I was looking at talking point and at Lotus and I see that an inter it's, it's often called integrated communication. So, um, Selena, maybe you can uh, sort of take this one. Is that it seems that, that now PR is sort of like a blend of PR and communications and, and sort of digital communication. So clearly it has evolved from where one began. And now it's a sort of really multifaceted approach to telling the story of your brand or of, you know, the sort of the people one manages. So PR, I feel, um, as just to pick up a bit on what Farishte was saying huh. also, the, it, she called it the art. And I think uh, she's absolutely right. I think PR, for me, is the art and science of mm. communication. Yeah. And that's always been the case. Mm. How, mm. The, how the, the mediums that we've used to be able to achieve that art and science, mm. those have evolved over time. 
but right. the very fabric or DNA of what PR is remains huh. the same. Huh. And it's really fascinating because I think PR has been, is perhaps one of the most agile industries because hmm. in communication, um, uh, there's so many factors. Psychology is a factor. What do yes. people relate to? You know, huh. mediums are a factor. How they keep changing. You know, when we, uh, when when Lotus started, for example, everybody cared about television coverage. You know, that was something really important. Mm. More than print coverage. Mm. Now it's all about digital, as you mentioned. Yes. So um, I think the way people respond to your communications has changed. Mm. The mediums have changed, and uh, the way that people digest information has changed mm -hmm. and the stories that people relate to or that resonate with people, that's changed. Yeah. And that's something that in COVID particularly, I feel, and, and has really evolved. There's been a massive uh, uh, change. Yeah. I think, you know, there's been much more of a desire to connect on a human level. Mm -hmm. There's much more emotional communication. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, there's much more digital communication. Yeah. And yeah, I think in what has happened with PR, however, um, in is there has been a blurring of boundary in terms of um, paid and unpaid. Yes. So, um, you know, so mm. and I think that that's a shift that's happened in when you talk about monetization of media. Mm. I think there's been a big monetization of media uh, in the last couple of years, and that's changed the boundaries uh, then of what mm. is uh, genuine content because it's credible mm. and the stories that are put out because they're paid for. Oh, okay. So then, what do you mean by genuine content? So, it, like, and I think it will be uh, uh, interesting to discuss this also with Farishte because yes. she was a journalist. So yep. she has a more authentic experience. But from my experience as a, as a communicator to the journalistic community, there was no question about paying a journalist to write a story mm -hmm. or to highlight a client or to promote a client's visual yes. picture or narrative in any yeah. shape or form. In fact, it was pretty offensive, you know, mm -hmm. to ask mm -hmm. anybody to do that. Yes. So it, but now that's very much the norm. I can easily mm -hmm. pick up the phone and talk to X, Y, Z journalists because most journalists are now um, influencers also, i.e. Okay. with, uh, you mm -hmm. know, purchasing um, social media uh, presence yeah. and footprint. Yeah. So it's very normal for Lotus to pick up the phone and call any one of these journalists who before we would you know, um, shy away from and yeah. in, in talking about any kind of monetary value. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this mm -hmm. wasn't something part of the DNA of our agency. It wasn't paid content, wasn't, and we're still kind of fighting it. Yeah. But now I'll pick up the phone and speak to any of these people and say, our client well, has this budget, what can you do? Yeah. Um, and it's completely no. Yeah. No, that's fascinating. We're going to take a very quick break at this juncture. We'll be back in flash to this wonderful conversation. Stay with us. Welcome back to the coffee table where we are having a wonderful conversation about public relations in Pakistan with CEO of Lotus, Selena Rashid and the CEO of Talking Point, Farishte Gachi Aslam. Now, before the break, we were talking about how um, PR and communications has sort of evolved over time. And we were talking about the, I, the sort of the concept of genuine content. So before we sort of delve deeper into that, Farishte, I have one sort of, again, rookie question. Is that how is, is PR? and marketing, is there an overlap there? There is absolutely no overlap. Okay. Marketing is all about what a brand team does for the brand mm -hmm. in the marketplace. Right. PR is more under communication. Huh. And communication huh. and PR, yes. But marketing is a separate activity altogether. Right. That's then, all about shelf hmm, space and hmm. uh, advertising and all of that. Right. PR is not that. PR huh. is more of what we call earned communication for the brand. So the brand right. does okay. something so huh. outstanding huh. and so interesting for the public huh. that you don't actually have to pay media to uh, write about it. That in its oh. true essence huh. is PR. Huh. For instance, um, let's take a film. Right. If a film is announcing its cast, announcing its new look, a poster, uh, a trailer, 
all that is so interesting for both publications and the public Haan. that uh, it it shouldn't be paid pr oh. or for instance Haan. when we uh, for annually now i do the luck style awards yes. and when we announce nominations for hmm. it hmm. uh or we or uh, the this the coverage of it when the event actually takes place all that is unpaid pr Right. it's unpaid obviously ah, because ah. it's content that you put out ah. for media it's something the publications want mm. for you to cover mm. however if uh, uh if if uh, a designer wants to just sell his or her clothes mm. that is not really so interesting for the media right, right so then you right. then mm. you put out money for them to use your content Okay so, so then ha- I I forever strive to uh, get the brand to tell a story. Ha. If it's a good story like the Pons Miracle Women campaign yes. was a story that every ha. publication wanted to write about. Hmm. There was no P- hmm. paid PR there. Hmm. Um the, the PFDC Sunsilk Fashion Week that Selena and I worked on for so many years now yes. was completely unpaid PR. Ah, you know uh ah. the content has to be uh it cannot be about the uh if it's a soap it cannot be about the new fragrance that's in the soap yeah. nobody really gives a damn if you want that put out <laughs> smells like you roses should, you need to pay for it <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's the chemi or or a new cap is put on a banaspati ghee yes. that is not news that is brand news yeah. and that has to be paid for <laughs> but if it's genuine mm. content that the mm. public is interested in yeah. no publication will ever ask you to pay for it and we are well within our rights to say this is content we are not paying for it Yeah. No, but that's fascinating because then I suppose and that is also the measure of good or effective PR is that you don't have to ask people to be talking about your product or about the brand that you represent because they've you've given it a life of its own and now it's sort of almost like a it's almost like a person that people want to know more about. Quite. Yeah. So, Farishta, how What do you think now about do you think that PR the nature of PR has changed with the internet because like Selena was saying you know now it's so much of it is digital and it's so there's so many let's say like PR in the age of the influencer how does that how has that changed how one approaches PR do you think that brands now have sort of different ideas about what they want to do and how they want to approach it you know things like that look we have to uh, like in all industries we have to evolve and we need to uh, keep pace with technology mm-hmm. and all this is d- driven by technology so if you have multiple platforms that have come up and if those platforms are populated by influencers then you have to work with them mm-hmm. but uh, I, and yes the lines are very blurred mm-hmm. very very blurred but mm-hmm. even um most influencers are like mini mini publications right. and yes that's how they make their money so you have mm. to pay them ha. to talk about you ha. but eventually there should come a time where the brand itself does something so interesting yeah. that the influencer wants to be a part of it right like when we're doing a movie premiere yeah. Yeah, yeah when you're doing a movie premiere yeah. you don't have to pay anybody to be there because they want to see that movie mm. they want to write about it they want to be there mm. so then that's a different ball game right it's all yeah. it all depends on the content right and we as pr agencies yeah <clears throat> our responsibility i think is to push that envelope all the time ha so all Selena, the ha. time to guide the brand that yeah. you know this is the way for Absolutely. And thing I'm really curious about. So Selena tell me, who needs PR? Is it just brands? Because I know that Lotus has a really diverse portfolio of people and companies and programs that that they represent. So clearly it seems that everybody could, you know, use a bit of PR. So absolutely, you know, initially it was sort of uh, associated Lotus particularly um, associated PR with the arts. Yes. So it was very much beauty, fashion, lifestyle, mm. uh, fine art, performing art, you know, um and 
But over the last uh, five years, hmm. we've um, built a significant uh, corporate portfolio. Huh. So we work on, say, the, there's the brand portfolios we work on. Hmm. Then there is the business to business, corporate financial sort of portfolio. Hmm. And then there are individuals we work with, whether yeah. they're, you know, celebrities or filmmakers or, you know, social uh, impact uh, led individuals, all sorts of. Yeah. And it's very interesting because it's the diversity allows a few things. Number one, it allows cross-pollination. There are more similarities between a fashion designer and the CEO of a bank than one would realize. Really? In their need for PR, absolutely. Wow. And in the kind of projection that is required. Right. So cross-pollination is great because it allows you to be so exposed to so many different industries and so many facets and nuances huh, that huh. you, the learning is fantastic as publicists. Right. But I, I have a, a point of view and Finish they spoke um, and highlighted a lot of the uh, projects that we've done, say, together or individually that we've all been involved with from an mm. arts and, you know, perspective. Mm. But when you talk about corporate PR, I think, and you talk about, say, banks or microfinance institutions mm. or mm. petroleum companies or, yeah. you know, and that, these are some of the people that we work with. They are, don't have stories that, for example, are instantly compelling for your digital influencers or your print media or television media to pick up. Yeah. In fact, the stories for them that they're interested in picking up are the crises or the scandals mm. or the, you know, things yes. like that. So there's a very different PR um, strategy, mindset and apparatus that you need to develop. Yeah. And what I have noticed is that perhaps because... Um, there isn't a very developed PR industry in Pakistan in terms of benchmarks and standards. And that's something that we're trying to rectify with, say, Preda, yes. is to bring a universality of mm. approach. Mm. But because that doesn't exist at the moment, you have PR operating in all shapes and forms. And you have a lot of companies of individuals that I would traditionally, if I took the definition of PR, I wouldn't use it for PR for those particular companies or individuals, or, you know, there are a lot of people. Mm. And the issue is you dilute the of what PR really is. Huh. And when you have so people, few people operating in the traditional PR landscape of how you're supposed to strategically communicate for a brand, yeah. the people who are not doing so become the larger noise, if you will. And that's what ah. people look to. So hmm. you have a very big disconnect between the brand and the PR agency, where the brand doesn't understand hmm. why a PR agency, for example, cannot get 10 press releases out in 30 newspapers each time every month talking about the launch of something completely insignificant and yeah. uninteresting, huh. you know, huh. and which is not what PR is. That is a pure right. marketing exercise. If you want to name blasted everywhere, just pay for it and get it done. Hmm. Hmm. So... Hmm. And this is even more so, I'd say, again, in the non, excuse my terminology, but the non-sexy uh, yes. industries, you know. <laughs> so fashion, music, art, lifestyle, beauty, these are still things that people want to talk about because yeah. there's always some celebrity portion, or, you know. Mm, uh, it's but glamorous, in the other it's industries, fun. there isn't yeah. the glamorous. So I think the challenge, if you huh, will, huh. in today's communication in this field is understanding uh, and explaining to brand teams and marketing managers that yeah. PR is an art and a science of telling a story. Yes. And not everything worthy of getting out there. Pick and choose yeah. that yeah. information on which you can build a beautiful story huh. and that will position your company in a, in, in a, in a, a sort of thought leadership uh, yeah. uh, perspective. Huh, absolutely. I'm really glad, Selena, that you brought up the idea of PR as crisis management as well. And, and Farishte, how often do you think that happens? And is crisis management also a part of the PR machinery or is it something that PR people just happen to kind of manage when it happens? It's a, it's a very specialized leg of PR hmm. and uh, you have to apply uh, different tools to make a success of it. Yeah. But yes, it's very much in the PR domain. Huh, huh. So, so do you think it's also something that people sort of talk about is that in a way, PR is also seen as a sort of spin machine 
where you sort of take bad news, but you give it an angle to kind of make it a more manageable or dilute it a little bit or, you know, sort of powder it up a little bit. Spin, spin, doctorate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's a, there's a <laughs> I don't think there's a, a company in the world that does not have a crisis management team. Yes. Because yes. when you're in the consumer space, yeah. anything and everything can go wrong. Yeah. Uh, films have it. Uh, corporations certainly have it. Mm. Um, <clears throat> government has it. Yes. Everybody, everybody has to uh, manage the bad news. Yeah. And when you're in the consumer space, when you're mm. dealing with gas mm. and pipes mm. and oil and yeah. spillages and yes. all of that, sure, it will yeah. get out. Yeah. And it's uh, it's your job to keep your company safe. So you have that department and then you have a PR expert who can help you communicate that strategy. Ha, Selena, you, well, you contribute also. <laughs> So, because crisis management yeah. is really at the heart of a Lotus, Lotus PR, it's something mm. that I, we, we specialize in. And the reason I wanted to talk a bit about this is because what I mentioned initially was uh, how psychology plays a very big yes. part in PR. Yes. And you talked about spin doctoring. Spin doctoring yeah. was an art <laughs> that you could do, I feel, in the 90s. And someone like, I think, Alistair Campbell, who was Tony Blair's spin doctor, yeah. uh, the government at that time, did a fabulous job. I don't think spin doctoring per se works very well anymore. And Why the is reason that? is the psychology uh, has changed. Really? You know, you mm. spinning yourself out of a crisis is no longer, a, 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 I think, an option for 90% of the crises that I've seen and we've yeah. managed as a company yeah. in the last five years. There's been a mm. very big change as opposed to the early, uh, you know, seven years or so. Yeah. And the change is that if there's an issue and you've made a mistake, you can no longer get away with saying, and brands used to do this all the time, that, oh, well, it wasn't actually our mistake because the consumer did X, Y, Z, or mm. this happened. Or, you've yeah. got external circumstances. Now, ownership. In a crisis, the number one thing that one has, one uh, that we've noticed is, and, and something we promote is, to take ownership for the mistakes that you've made and work to mm. better yourself. Yeah. So... A big form of communication now, therefore, companies are working on is internal communication. PR okay. was always limited to externally, what ah. people think of you. Yes. But there's a greater realization with companies now that it's what your own people in your companies think of you, perceive of you, and how you react in situations is probably more important because they shape or they can be your biggest advocates or influencer, influencers ah. um, of your narrative huh. if brought on board. That's actually really, really fascinating insight because this whole idea, so clearly it also means that corporate culture has changed over time as well to foster that sense of ownership within. But then also I feel like it, it might also be the good marker, a, a marker of good PR is that the consumer also has a similar sense of ownership for a brand where they want accountability then. So do you think that the consumer has also sort of been... You know, I won't say influence, but has changed. Like the perception or that interaction between a brand and a consumer has also changed over time. No, that's incredibly true. That's absolutely true. People want accountability from their brands. They have ownership in their brands. If they see a brand slip up, they want to be able to defend the brand. And yeah. there's a lot of disappointment if a brand doesn't own up to the mistake that they've made from the consumer side and from the internal employee mm, side. Mm. And people are more woke now also yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, you know, people, uh, stuff you could sort of slip under the rug before you can't do anymore. Which is also great. And you shouldn't. <laughs> and you shouldn't, absolutely. We're going to take a very quick break and be back in a flash. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Coffee Table, where we are in conversation with Selena Rashid, the CEO of Lotus PR, and Farishte Gati Aslam, who is the CEO of Talking Point. Now, we've been having a really cool chat. So, 
but now I want to, so I'm curious about a sort of standardization of the PR industry, which sounds like it's still in it sort of, it's still developing. And I think in that respect, um, Farishta, tell me a little bit about why we need to have a more kind of standardized approach to PR and something that is more formalized. And I think that would include the work that you all are doing with Prida as well. Yes, um, we, we were struggling to get PREDA registered. Yeah. Until we do that, we are not a formal organization. But yes, the intent is that uh, it should, uh, there should be some rules and bylaws that, that mm. govern all agencies working in this workplace because we have our fair share of issues mm. with clients that we can only deal with uh, better as a force rather mm. than individually as uh, agencies. Mm. So yeah, that, that, that's the job for Prida to do. But I must say that we have to be strict with ourselves as well. Mm. I, mm. You cannot be a PR agency, which is essentially all about communication Hmm. when you don't have uh, the, the language skill sets to do it. Hmm. Because all your communication on digital media is essentially in English right. and in uh, other areas is essentially in Urdu. And if you don't have those skill sets, hmm. uh, then and you, and, and you don't bring in others to your agency who can help you, yeah. then it's all very slipshod and everybody gets a very bad name. So these are ah. things to be corrected and mm. certainly, um, see, it's still in its infancy. Yeah. <clears throat> Selena is the oldest and she's 14 years old. Then, uh, <laughs> yes. is that right, Sally? Are you, yeah, yeah then um, it, it'll take a while because we've evolved. We've evolved so much from mm. just being uh, coverage to actually talking brand plans to now dealing with crises and, and, uh, so there's a there's a long way to go, and when I and luckily because of uh, media integration and uh, everything opening up to global, we, we there are courses and there are so many ways where you can understand how PR has moved. And by the way, PR is moving globally. Hmm. It's not as hmm. if just in Pakistan that the yes. change has taken place. It's yeah. taking place in entrenched PR worlds like the UK and the USA. Mm. Mm. So, and we can only uh, learn from uh, what they do because now we are, you know, almost there as to be, our, our problems are their problems and their problems, yeah. you know, their the benefits are our problems. benefits. So, <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's, it's um, all very linked. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's a long way to go. Huh. And uh, it's, a, it's a happy journey. It's yeah. a journey that, you know, um, you, once you enjoy your work, yeah. there's nothing like yeah. it. You don't have to work absolutely. a day in your life. <laughs> no, absolutely. And that um, having um, a, a, an agency like Prida, for example, like a formalized approach to it will probably also help in the perception of PR as like a solid, proper job, which has like these real world uses and applications that are, that are really, really helpful. And, and also smart strategically to have. And Selena, I know that you also have advised um, journalism courses on curriculum to include PR into courses like that. And I think that is also really interesting because then does that mean that journalism and media communications uh, programs haven't included PR before in that sort of umbrella and then now are? So the really funny thing, Mina, is yeah. that PR has uh, an image problem. And yeah. that is so ironic. <laughs> yes. But PR has an image problem yeah. around the world. Yes. People associate PR people with like, you know, I mean, the, the parties and, you know. Yeah. Uh, sort of handing out your cards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And PR agents are like these schmoozy, networky, yeah. you know, oh, my PR will fix that. Like, yeah. It's a very, the thing is, <laughs> the, I don't, I swear I feel the amount, the hours that people in PR work, the way that people in PR work, and the sheer amount of strategic thinking in PR is so huge, yeah. but so unknown. Huh. So, and I think at result of it, um, it's the artificial, not artificial, superficial elements of PR mm. that people understand. 
But I go back to what I said, and this is why it's so important for me that as part of curriculum, trainings, yeah. teachings across, uh, you know, all uh, levels uh, mm. is because uh, it is an art and a science. Strategic yeah. communication mm. is an art and a science. Huh. That is a very basic understanding. Yes. And so... Therefore, councils like Creda for me are very important because they can help, as Frish, they said, check ourselves or self-regulate ourselves and help bring the industry to a place where there is a community understanding between all of us, uh, mm. you know, uh, mm. peer, uh, people in PR. What is it that PR is and what are the kind of services we have to offer and what is the standard of services that we yes. aspire to? Huh, exactly. And only then... Can mm. we tell people what PR is? And only then can we address communal problems. And on a yeah. quick note about educating people on PR, yeah. I think there are two routes. One is the academics. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I conduct as many workshops, sessions, uh, and lectures at schools mm. and the college level mm. to be able to inculcate like the discipline of, of PR yes. and try and change the perception of it. Yeah. And then other than the academic, like I said, there's the on-the-job learning mm. um, that happens when you join uh, PR agencies. Yeah, yeah. So, Farishti, what are the ethical considerations or standardization considerations in the PR industry that, you know, needs to be clarified? Yes, there are, of course. Mm. And uh, PR comes with its own uh, own trials, you know. Um, because it's not a very formalized industry, mm. uh, we don't have a pool of people to hire from. That's because right. basically you hire somebody who is creative or who has uh, media knowledge and then you train them. There right. is no such thing as getting somebody from the outside yeah. who, say, worked in an advertising agency. Once you've worked in an advertising agency, uh, it's a different bent of mind. Right. So they literally right. have to unlearn everything, mm. start from scratch, mm. and uh, you have to train them. So right. that's particularly try trying and tiring <laughs> because... Yeah. Uh, you, you train them for a good uh, year, six months, a year. Yeah. And yeah. just as they're beginning to come into their own, uh, somebody offers them a job with a little more money and off they go and oh, you're God. back to square <laughs> one. So yeah. that to me is one of the biggest, biggest trials of uh, yeah. working yeah. In, a, in, in the PR yeah. industry. Yeah. So one aspect of PR that Talking Point and Lotus does and in terms of sort of PR in Pakistan that I find super duper fascinating and really interesting is this idea of public diplomacy and this idea and Selena you mentioned this in the very first segment about how Lotus has taken on so many projects that actively seek to look at all of the wonderful things that Pakistani brands and artists and creatives have been doing over time. And then PR is the machinery that has sort of propelled it and put it out into the world. And I think that Coke Studio, for example, is one wonderful example of, how, of what PR can do not just for a brand, but also for a sort of really sort of global image of a country as well. I'm really excited that you just mentioned this. Because <laughs> one of the hats I wear, uh, being the CEO of Lotus is sort of my job, my day job. Yeah. But one of the hats I've worn in the last year and I've had the fortune uh, of is um, being on the foreign minister's public diplomacy advisory yes. team. And uh, when this episode launches, it'll be, I think, a day or two after a big collaboration that we brokered between Coke Studio and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to recognize Coke Studio as a brilliant cultural diplomacy entity and export across, across the globe, all 117 of our missions. So Excellent. public diplomacy, <laughs> I think absolutely, it's something I've been doing in any case through Lotus, through like whether we work with Shirleen Obed Chinoy, who's a two-time Academy Award winner, Malala yes. Yousafzai, the mm -hmm. Nobel Laureate, you know, or some of the best fashion designers in the country, HSY, yeah. Kamiya Rukni, or L'Oreal Paris when they launched in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I mean, and there's so many people, brands. Uh, that we work with, that we've been doing this 
uh, with in any case uh, mm. from a from our private sector capacity. Yeah. But the excitement for me now, uh, in professionally, is to be able to do that, but on a macro level with uh, you know brokering of private public private uh, partnerships. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Selena and Farishte, for being with me today and unraveling the wonderful and interesting world of public relations in Pakistan. And both of you are doing such fascinating and wonderful work with all of these myriad interests of your companies and the, and the brands and the people that you represent. And I've had a wonderful time talking to both of you. And I'm sure that you guys have had an excellent time watching this show. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. And we will see you next time on The Coffee Table. Bye-bye.